Welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Hilary Russo, Certified Holistic Health Coach and Health and Wellness Journalist. This is an empowering place to explore self-awareness, self-love, and transformation through health, healing, and humor. By sharing life-changing experiences, knowledge, and guests with varied expertise, we'll explore who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up, mind, body, and spirit. I'm glad you're here. When you hear the words warrior, lover, king, and hero, what comes to mind? For each and every one of us, those words likely mean something different. And when you're a man trying to be the best you can be, whether you're a father, a husband, a son, a brother, or just a friend, just being can be a challenge in itself, right guys? And by the way, this isn't just a man's world we're talking about here, but it is the world best-selling author, speaker, and storyteller Eric Rogel focuses on, and for good reason. His mission is to inspire men to be the best they can be, leaders at home, champions in the office, motivating guys to uncover their sacred seven. And I'm not just talking about the chakras. So how did Eric go from being that soft and shy guy to stepping into his own greatness? With a few bumps and bruises along the way. You're about to find out. And you may just uncover your own warrior, lover, king, queen, and hero on this episode of Holistically Speaking. Okay, the warrior, the lover, the king, the hero, the man of the hour, right here on Holistically Speaking, Eric Rogel. What's new and good? <laughs> hey, Hillary, how are you? It's a great, great. intro, man. I love that. I'm, I'm awesome and, uh, and, and really, really honored to be here with you on the show. So really appreciate you inviting me on. Well, I'm so elated to have you. We have been friends for a short amount of time, actually, but I feel like we, we've actually created a, a, a really nice friendship and been supportive of each other on the journeys in the last couple months. And it's just amazing how people come together and just create and connect and align. And uh, you're one of those guys. And I'm really just really happy to know you and hold space for you. So oh, I appreciate that. And, you know, I feel the same way about you. And you're right. I mean, it feels like we've known each other forever, but it really only has been, relatively speaking, a short mm -hmm. amount of time. But I'm, I'm one of those people that believe it's more about connection and less about the amount of time. Yeah, definitely. Quality over quantity, as they there say, you go. right? There you go. Exactly. Exactly. So you're joining us on Holistically Speaking, and I love this topic, and we've had many a conversations about your own podcast, mm -hmm. the space that you're creating for men to become, truly embody the men that they are, and uh, the warriors, the lovers, kings, and heroes is the name of your podcast, but it's also really the basis and the foundation of what you're creating. So mm -hmm. just yeah. share a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the warrior, lover, king, hero, those are basically the four archetypes that um, I use as the foundation of my work. And it kind of started because I was going on my own journey. It was kind of a personal journey. And you know, I, I, you and I have had this conversation, you know, I was raised, <laughs> my joke is, you know, I was raised by a single mom and the joke is that she raised me like a veal, right? I had to be soft and tender. I wasn't allowed to get bumped or bruised or anything. And, and for me, it, it really just did not feel right. There was something that felt off about that. And, you know, for me, it was, what is my journey to being a man? What does it mean to be a man? And it was confusing. Um, Confusing from a standpoint of, you know, where am I along this journey? Have I, have I gotten there? Do I still need to go further? And it was about looking for role models and other men that I could, could use as examples for me. Um, and, you know, <laughs> growing up as a veal, as, as a quiet little kid, <laughs> you know, soft in the corner, you know, mom was, and, and I love her to death. So when you hear me talk about stuff, mm. you know, when mom raised me, it's, it's not coming from victim. It's not coming from blame uh, anymore, I should say, because it did for a long time. You know, again, you and I've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, man, I can't believe what mom did to me. How dare she raise me this way if she had only blah, blah, you know, 
the story. Mm-hmm. But really, in, in essence, I absolutely love and adore her. She's passed um, 23 years now, but um, but I loved and adored her. And I can't thank her enough for what she gave me because it really set me on this path. So part of my, my upbringing, you know, as a quiet kid, a lot of reading. So I read a lot of stories and myths and legends and comic books and science fiction and all of that. <clears throat> and I became a really big fan of um, uh, Joseph Campbell. I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell, if listeners are familiar with Joseph Campbell, but he wrote, you know, The Power of Myth. He did a beautiful Mm -hmm. PBS series with Bill Moyers where he talked about myth. And it's where we get the phrase, the hero's journey. Really, that was Joseph Campbell. And he had the thing, the monomyth, and that was the hero's journey. And it was all these archetypes. And every story ever told follows that arc, follows that journey. And it's got, you know, a whole bunch of different archetypes. And I really broke it down for me and looked at, you know, where was I on this journey? And, you know, I have mentors that I worked with and one uh, really phenomenal mentor who's meant a lot to me in my life, a man named Rob James, uh, did a lot of work. And we really kind of looked at this and, and, the f- and he had a series of archetypes that he had developed. And I looked at it and it was the warrior, the lover, the king, the hero is really that hero's journey that we're all on. Right. So the warrior is that part of us that we have to tap into in order to move forward. So it is our boldness, courage, leadership, um, commitment, being a guardian, decision. And if you look at any great story, Hillary, it's really that nothing gets started until the hero, ultimate hero of the story, makes those decisions and faces those challenges and taps into their warrior to get moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then along the journey, they find, you know, their life's purpose or their passion or a love interest or something that they really find worth fighting for that has deep, deep meaning to them in their lives. And that's when they become the lover archetype. So it's not about anything, you know, in the bedroom. It's not about any of that. It is tapping into your heart more. It's where they find that passion, find that purpose. And and the lover side of us is the wisdom, um, the creativity, the playfulness, the joy, the support, the empathy, all of these things that make everything in our lives grow and flourish. And what I found is that when you can integrate your warrior and your lover, when you can really tap into both sides of yourself, and again, this comes from looking at all the stories and myths with all the heroes that are there, when they do find both of those and can embrace them both, that's when they become the king, true leader. Or the queen. Right. Right. And when you, when I do this with, you know, corporations and companies Mm -hmm. and, and and it's a, you know, co-ed um, group, it is king and queen, right? Mm Because the warrior and the lover doesn't matter if you're male or female or, or however you identify, it doesn't matter. It's not about sex. It's about just these different energies that are within us, right? So Mm -hmm. it's warrior, lover, we all have that. And then it's king and correct or queen. And if you, you know, the example I always give is brave heart, right? So Mm -hmm. look at brave Mm -hmm. heart, right? Warrior, lover, brave heart. And that's when he became the true leader and everybody started to follow him because he had tapped into both. So my real journey was, how do I become the king? How do I get to my king? And it's been that journey of embracing my warrior, which I was told growing up was wrong, bad. I mean, we see this Hillary in society now. We've had this conversation where masculinity is considered toxic or bad. Um, and, and a lot of men come to me and they're like, Eric, I don't, I don't really know what to do. I don't know if I tap into that my warrior, my beast, am I going to be seen as bad? Is it, is it going to scare people? And, you know, that's really been a, um, a challenge for a lot of men. And then the other side of it is embracing that lover side of us. Um, and again, I'm speaking as a man about men that I work with. And the issue is, am I going to be seen as weak um, if I tap into that and, and that's not really the case. Cause like I said, on, on the lover side, it's, it's wisdom, it's inspiration, it's creativity, playfulness. None of those things are weak. Those are all the things that make life so, so beautiful, so juicy, so amazing. 
So we have to tap into those. And that's when you can become the king and queen. And then obviously the hero uh, is when you elevate past ego and doing for yourself and those immediately around you and you do selflessly for others. And that's when you become the hero. Now, understand, Hillary, it's not about, it's not linear. It's not like you go from this one to this one to that one to this one. We step back and forth between these at all times in our lives. Sometimes we need sure. to tap into more warrior. Sometimes we need to tap into more lover. Um, sometimes we're the king. Once in a while, we may have to really step into hero and do something truly heroic. So that's really where the four archetypes come in. And I find that it's it's very, very easy for people to remember that because it is all of our journey. So I say it's like the software of our soul. It's why every myth ever written follows that arc, the stories. Think of the comic books that people love. And, you know, there's a ton of comic book movies that are out there now. Mm -hmm, sure. and, and why we relate to these characters and, and even, you know, characters in, uh, like I said, myths and legends and science fiction and fantasy novels is because those stories follow this arc. And it really is our story. It's who we are. Right. And our stories are everything. You know, a lot of times we don't want to remember our stories. Mm -hmm. You're embracing the story of your youth. At some point in time in your life, you were not connecting with it. You were putting the blame out. You were putting the, the victim role. I think we've all been there. That's really the ego stepping in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where was that transition? Because, I mean, you're a guy who you're a coach, you're a motivational speaker, you are out there doing amazing things. And supporting a number of people on their own journeys to find that space on their own as well. But, you know, you were a guy that worked in the corporate world as well and, and went through a lot of ups and downs in your own life to kind of find where you are now. What was, yeah. what was that like? <laughs> Who are you? I, I know yeah. like you and I grew up in the same area. Like we're both Westchester kids from New York. And I, yeah. and I think we've had the conversation. I'm like, would I have liked Eric if like you were walking the halls? And he yeah, probably eye? not. I could tell you probably not. I was, you know, when I, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I was, you know, one of the things that, that mom raised me to be was, was fearful. Um, I wasn't raised in courage. And courage is so important. You know, it's such a warrior attribute for, so, you know, for all of us to, to be able to tap into courage. And, and I was very quiet, very shy, you know, very kind of, you know, afraid of everyone. I didn't want to make waves. Mom, a big thing, mom was, you know, she was very active in the community. So it was like my brother and I don't make waves, don't stand out, don't do anything wrong because it's going to reflect on me. Mm -hmm. All right. So I was very, very quiet as a kid. So I don't know, Hill, if, if, if we would have, because I probably would have just kind of put my head down and, and, and walked away <laughs> right? because that's kind of how I was. Aww. And for me, you know, what it was, was that the turning point I believe came, you know, I was a senior in high school and I made a decision and the decision was, this doesn't feel right. You know, I wanted to play sports. Sports scared my mom because that was all about injury and getting hurt and banged up and bruised and that kind of thing. I, I, I always wanted to do martial arts. I, I just was drawn to that. That was definitely a no-go because that was nothing but broken bones and blood and stitches and everything. And I felt that when I graduated from high school and went away to college, I could really take the opportunity to reinvent myself and kind of step a little, like jump a little further along my journey, right? Um, embrace some of the things that I wanted to. I would be out on my own. Um, to her credit, mom was awesome. She knew that I would be out on my own and she kind of let go. And I know it wasn't easy for her, but she did let go. Uh, and I stepped out. And that's really where I said, you know, decision, this is who I'm going to be. I am going to go further on my journey. And and looking back on it, that was a very warrior thing to do, to really decide that this was the beginning of my journey. And funny enough, my very, very, very first night in college, and I will be honest, I was scared to death to go away to school. Oh. I mean, scared to death to go away to school. And weren't you a, a frat guy too? I mean, you were in a fraternity. Yeah, oh, yeah like, I was in a fraternity and the whole that's thing. That's not wallflower and, stuff there. No, no. Again, decision, <laughs> right? It was about yeah. decision. Yeah. I'm going to do this. My, I think my sophomore year, I was president of my dorm. And then my sophomore, junior year, I helped found my chapter of the fraternity. Mm 
mm. uh, a national fraternity, and I yeah. brought them to my school and, and founded the chapter there and really got involved because, again, it was decision. And like I said, looking back, it was now's the time to tap into that warrior. And, and that first night uh, in the dorm online, not knowing anybody, but online for dinner, I look up and there's a flyer on the wall for a martial arts club. And I took the number and I said, this is part of this and there's, this is there for a reason. And I joined it and found out I loved it. And I love the bumps and bruises and broken bones and, you know, sweating and bleeding. And, and I was like, this is what I'm missing. And funny enough, that's really what did it for me. I was like, this feels right. And it was very strange, Hillary. It was, it was a very strange feeling to experience that for me, but it moved me forward. Did you tell your mom you were doing martial arts? <laughs> I'm just sitting here I, thinking, I'm like, I can only imagine. I, You're like, um, oh, yeah, I don't think I did right yeah. away. I think part of me was like, this is going to freak mom out. Like she's, you know, scared enough that I'm here is her baby, her oldest, right? I was the oldest. So of course, you know, um, that was the big thing. And, you know, here, her baby was going away to school. And, and like I said, bless her. She, she was great about letting me go. And cause I knew I wanted to go away to school. I didn't want to be, you know, in a local school. I wanted to go away. I wanted the whole experience. Um, and so that's what I did, but I don't think I told her right away that I was doing that. I yeah, think, you would have been yeah. back in that cage in a heartbeat. And it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the and veal would, is not yeah. prepared. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, that was one bumped and bruised veal by the end of it. But um, it was uh, it was a great learning experience for me, and 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 it was great too because the, you know, the instructor that was teaching it, he became a role model too because I would watch him at the front of the room and go, yeah, that's it right there, mm-hmm. that's the command, that's the presence. That's who I want to be. And so I was able to get, fortunately in my life, some really great role models for me as men who could help me further along. And I know, Hillary, we're talking about men because it's my experience, Mm -hmm. but, you know, this can work for women too. I mean, I know women who've had really incredible role models in their lives um, who've moved them along as well. And so that's why I'm such a big, big proponent of seeking these people out. And, and, and making them a part of your life. That was a, a very difficult thing for me to do as well, was to allow and accept having these people as role models for me. Yeah. Do you think that, that does that have anything to do with the, the kind of relationship you could have had with your dad? Yeah, in a way, uh, I think, you know, my, my dad to me was, was always larger than life. You know, my, my parents divorced when I was about 12, I think. And, you know, I always looked up to my dad. He was, he was an athlete. He, you know, all the way through into college, you know, he played baseball. He was a pitcher. Uh, he always excelled at that. He had a motorcycle. He had a Corvette. He had a great job, made great money, Mm. very successful, good looking, charming. People really loved him. They were attracted to him. They wanted to be around him. And so did I. And and there was a a part of me as a kid that felt um, very kind of shunned and abandoned by my dad. You know, Mm. Um, looking back on it, uh, I had to do a lot of forgiveness to my dad. He's he's passed now as well, uh, about five years now. But, you know, there was a time where I really resented him for quote unquote, how I felt he treated me, what he did to me. And again, Hmm. growing up, I realized, holy crap, I am my father. I absolutely feel everything he felt having kids at 26, having, you know, a family that young, having to provide, um, you know, he had to give up on his dreams to go to work. And, I could really feel where I probably would have reacted and done this exact same things that he did mm-hmm. in his life. So, um, yeah, uh, there was that strong feeling of, Hey dad, I want to make you proud of me, but I'm not going to come to you. I'm going to go to these other men and, and find these other role models that I can emulate to be mm-hmm. the best man that I could be. So yeah, Hillary, I agree with you. I think that that was a part of it. There was that part of me that wanted to prove that I could do mm-hmm. it. You know, yeah. So here you are, some years later, um, with the bumps and bruises, the martial arts, uh, <laughs> yeah. not the same veal you were, no. And and you're creating a really powerful space for men to really become or come into their own. 
you know. And in addition to the warrior, the lover, the king, and the hero, and by the way, great podcast. I highly recommend people check Thank it out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have these sacred seven core values. <laughs> yeah, we we and I and I cannot take full credit for the sacred seven. So there's core values. And mm -hmm. it was a group of, of I, I believe it was about nine of us, really, truly amazing men. This was put together by, by Rob James, like mm -hmm. said, my, my mentor. And he was a Marine and they have a, you know, core values in the Marines. Many organizations, fraternities, military organizations have core values. And they're so important because it's what guides us through our life. And I never had this growing up. Like I didn't, grew up with this concept and, and, and Rob said, Hey, we're going to get the men together. Uh, we called ourselves the men of the round table and <laughs> we're going to come up with what we believe. And we didn't, we weren't aiming at seven, but it ended up at seven, which is such a you know magical number. And they are courage, honesty, integrity, commitment, duty, honor, and love. Yeah. And the idea being, if you can live in those seven, it doesn't matter who you are you know, um, age, sex, race, creed, color, political affiliate, doesn't matter. None of it matters. If you're living those seven or whatever your core values are that are important to you and you're living in those, it, you can't, you can't go wrong. I mean, those are the, that's your roadmap. That's your, that's your guiding star, your, your North star, right? Those seven. And when I looked at it, Rob and I were having a conversation about integrity and living in integrity and how important it is. And we were looking at the connection between all seven and we really looked at courage, honesty, and integrity. And it was that you must have, and I'll get a little deeper into this, Hillary, if you'd like me to, but just on the surface, it was, you must have the courage to be ruthlessly honest with yourself and unless you are, you can't live in integrity because integrity is the idea of being whole, right? You are one person. You are whole. You are not somebody different in private than you are in public. You have no skeletons in your closet. You're not hiding anything. There's no mask, mm -hmm. right? You are just fully who you are. To me, it's living, breathing, walking, talking, honesty. And the thing is, is, is to, and I've done this exploration, Hillary, and it is, it can be brutally devastating to the ego. I've been there, but when you can really tap into the courage to be ruthlessly, ruthlessly honest with yourself and see where you're not being in integrity, where you mm -hmm. are hiding out, where you are not being your true self. And I had to do this, you know, Rob put me through it and, and I put myself through it and I really took a, a long, hard look and I was like, wow, man, holy crap. I have been so out of integrity in this area, in this area, in this area, and I need to clean that up. And when I really looked at it, I said, oh my God, C-H-I, Chi, that's what's been holding me back. Because until you're living in integrity, integrity creates flow in your life, being whole, being able, it's freedom, Hillary, when you are just mm. fully who you are unapologetically. And I mean, unapologetically to yourself, right? You're just being honest. This is who I am, good and bad. I embrace it all. I'm okay with it all. You know, I'm not resisting the part of me that's a liar, the part of me that's a cheater, the part of me that, you know, is afraid, the fearful side of me. I found for me personally, when I could embrace all of those things in myself, then I could at least work towards being better. But it's when I denied that stuff and hid it from myself. I was not living in integrity and it was causing a block. So my chi, courage, mm -hmm. honesty, integrity, my chi was not flowing. I didn't have energetic flow. And so once coming to the realization that I had to get more courageous, had to be more ruthlessly honest with myself and really come from integrity. And that's where I created the flow. We're so scared to be judged. We're so scared to be rejected. And mm. so much of that comes from the fear of not being liked and loved. And I remember a, a conversation we had, I don't know, a couple months ago about how you were really struggling with the love in that core seven. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you Why know, is it, that? 
You know, it's interesting. And it's actually going to lead into something, Hillary, because if, if you know, I'm going to get like real open and honest and I'll just tell you my story of the chi and, and where it came from. But for me, love, when when the nine of us were sitting in that room and, and it was for days, this wasn't like, you know, oh, we sat down for a couple hours and just hammered these out. This was a few days. And um, love was brought up and I resisted it. I went, no, guys, love, that just sounds too too weak, too feminine, love. Why would we have love in there? And Wow. It was just an amazing awakening and awareness for me that love is just the most powerful, powerful um, value that we can have. It's the most devastating of all. And um, it's funny because Rob has said, love is like a tiger that has you by the throat killing you. And it sounds brutal, but when you really look at it, love is devastating. It is all these things. Love kills off everything that's not love in us. And we really can come from true love. Oh man, does that, is that powerful? And it takes incredible courage. That's why courage and love are at the two ends. They're the alpha and the omega. You must have courage. You can't move forward to the other ones. And love is the ultimate. And you know, you talked about my podcast and I interview successful men and, and it's, you know, uh, celebrities and entrepreneurs and athletes and, and, and retired military and, and some active duty military as well. And the one thing that I found, I would ask these guys, what, what, which of the sacred seven hits you the most? And al almost all the military guys say love is the most powerful for them. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe I thought that was the weakest one and didn't want it. And here are these men who put their lives on the line daily. Mm -hmm. by choice, out of love for us, their country, their mm -hmm. fellow soldier, their their own families, and that sense of duty and, and honor and love that they have. And it just was so beautiful and powerful for me. And that's really what led me to, to looking at my own integrity. And, and I'll tell you the story real quickly and how it doesn't work and, and you know, the conversations you and I have had. And you know, I had to really look at where was I not being in integrity? And, and Robert asked me a question at one point. He said, Eric, where are you bullshitting yourself? Where, where are you just lying to yourself? Mm. And I was like, wow, I, I really don't know. And you would mention something about, you know, protecting ourselves. And, and I really took a look at it and I'm like, why can't I go any deeper? Why am I, I'm looking at things like, ah, you know, I don't deserve it. Or maybe I'm unworthy or all these crazy things. And when I really looked at it, I'm like, what is my ego trying to protect me from? What does it not want me to know? So courage, I found, is not binary. It's not either you're courageous or you're not, right? It's There's a sliding scale of courage. Mm -hmm. You can be this courageous. Then you can step into this much courage and then this much. Where was I not having the, enough courage to be honest? And when I really looked at it, the, the final thing that I came to, Hillary, what was devastating and heartbreaking to me was I sat there and I, I woke up one morning and it hit me. Wow, I, I really hate myself. Mm. I really, truly hate myself. That's a big word to use. It, well, yeah, but it, I was really looking at the honesty of it. And I was looking at mm. what do I really just hate about me? And and I went through the list. And, and what was interesting was it was devastating and heartbreaking at the beginning. And then it became freeing and open and honest. And I looked at where was I bullshit? Where was I not being in integrity? And the integrity was, or the not being in integrity was, Hillary, I, if I don't even like myself, why am I trying so hard to make you like me? Why am I trying so hard to make you like me when I don't like me? So then I was realized I had this nice guy persona that I was putting on that was so fake and phony. And it was, hey, you know, here I am, a uh, funny guy and being charming and cute and whatever else. And it was just bullshit. Mm. And, and when I dropped that, when I looked at that and said, all right, so look, Eric, here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff you may not like about yourself. You actually hate about yourself. Great. You know what? Own it. Own it. Be okay with it. You are who you are. Mm -hmm. So we can work on it now because that's what's always on the other side, right? Do it you is, work on it? Do you oh, find that if there are things you don't like, it's oh, not just yeah. like, oh, whatever. It's, you know what? I need to work on this. This is something we don't go for perfection. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're perfectly imperfect, right? But there is a there there is a yearning to want to be better. 
right? I'll always, 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 you know, we've had this conversation, Hillary. Mm-hmm. I am a hundred percent about being the best man that I can be and being mm-hmm. better and better and better and better. And it is a journey, which is why I use the archetypes rather. There's no finish line, right? There's just better, better, next, next, more, more, right? So for me, it, it, in not being aware of how I resisted, so I'm going to look at it that way now, mm-hmm. or I'm going to word it that way now. So when I said, I hate myself and there's things I don't like about myself, what it is, I just resisted those things in mm-hmm. me. Like I can be an asshole <laughs> and I'd be like, no, I'm not really an asshole. I'm a nice guy. You know what? Uh, uh-uh, Screw that. I can be an asshole. And I just was okay with it. And I went, all right, I get it. Now I'm going to work on being less and less of an asshole and directing that more and being more intentional and not being on the limiting side and turning it towards the empowering side. And it became okay, but it was the resistance, Hillary. It was the, Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I'm fighting against this. No, it was just, all right, it's there and now I'm going to work on it. And once I got that and I became an integrity with myself, stopped pretending, took the mask off, became more me, everything started to flow. And Mm -hmm. so that was really the beginning of be, you know, the courage, honesty, and integrity. And so I do that every day now. I look at, okay, where am I not being in integrity now? What can I look at next? What do I have the courage to look at next? We already broke through this big one. Let's look at the other ones. And let's really be in integrity as much as I can. And, you know, the thing is, Hillary, when I, when I said the word I hate myself earlier, most people say, well, the other side of that is love. You love yourself. Well, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. Fear. Mm-hmm. Fear. Yeah. So what it was, was that hate really was just a fear of what I didn't like about myself. Mm -hmm. Fear of admitting, you know what, Eric, you can be an asshole sometimes, or you could just be weak, or you could just be lazy, or you could, and and just denying that whole side of me. But when you have the courage to look at it, it takes the fear away, and then you can get to love. Or fear that uh, fear that others will find you out. Correct. Right. Hiding. It's Call the you That's out. It was. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's a big one. We we don't want to be called out, and so it's almost you grab onto it because you want to be the one to reveal it, or <laughs> right, or. Yeah. And a lot of people do do that, you know, the, it, which I, I mean, there's a part of living integ- integrity in that, but you're still coming from being caught. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So. And the it, thing that I found is that you're always caught. Mm. Right. You're not, I, I found out, Eric, you're not <laughs> anywhere near as clever as you think you are. Everybody knows. Yeah. You're the only one who doesn't know right now or isn't admitting it. And then once you can admit it and do it, you'd be surprised the reaction you get from people because they're like, they can breathe easier too. They're like, oh, okay, well, he gets it. So I get it. So we can just be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good to be real. It's good to just be, Mm -hmm. right? We spend a lot of time and it's that whole be, do you have philosophy, you know, when we are just present and in the moment, that's when we are more aligned with being able to have what we want and then and it's the, it's the be do have doing and then the having. And yeah. a lot of people do it backwards. They're like, I need this. And then well, I'll do that. But, and then that's where, when I'll be the person I need to be. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it does not work like that. <laughs> but that's cute. You keep doing it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what's funny too, is that when you talk about that, what it, what it just brought up was, do you know how much, I mean, I'm sure people listening can feel this, but do you know how much energy it takes to keep that mask on? It's exhausting. And just, it's, it's ex- not only is it exhausting, but, you know, once you can just drop it. And, and you said, you know, the be, do, have, and you could just be. I mean, I would never be present with anybody. I, I shouldn't say never. That's, that's different. I, I should say it was difficult to be present with people because I was constantly in my head going, all right, am I keeping this up? Am I, you know, are, they, are they believing the, the bullshit I'm throwing out? Are they, can I, am, am I have the mask on straight? Is everything okay? Can they see? Tremendous amount of energy. And once you stop that, you're fully in integrity. You can just be real and open and honest and, 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 and come from love and just, you know, appreciation and all that. Then it's just so much easier because you can be present with somebody because you're not running in the background of, all right, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? What are they thinking about me? Do they know that I'm this or that? Or mm-hmm. 
it, it's all gone. You can drop all of that. And, and so you know, much work. You know, so much work. It took <laughs> so me a long much time energy. Really, yeah. <laughs> it's exhausting. But, yeah. And it's just so much better when you can just be honest and open. But it does. It takes a lot of courage to get it there. It does. It does. So there's a lot to take away from this. So I want to I want to move into another area real quick. So we've talked mm. about your core seven values, the seven mm-hmm. core values. And being the warrior, the lover, the king or queen and or queen. hero. And, um, you know, at this point, I just you've shared a lot. And there, I'm, I can only imagine there are gentlemen that are listening to this and they're going to be like, oh, you know, I totally get this guy. And I hope they do. Because, look, I, I, coming to know you, I think you provide so much of you, you provide a lot of love in a lot of different areas and you. you are coming from that place of integrity. So um, thank you for sharing who you are, but let's have a little fun, Eric Rodgale. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. All right. So let's do a little rapid fire. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. You awesome. know this. You know are there this points? Works. Do I win? Is there a prize at the end of this? Ding, or? ding, 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 ding. You win a kitty cat who's sitting here and purring on my lap. Okay. No, you can't have her. She's the one thing you cannot have. <laughs> we'll, we'll think of something. We'll think of okay. something. You got so it. Check is, check is in the mail. Uh, all right. So I'm going to throw out these words. These mm. are words that are very familiar to you. Some of them I just came up in conversation as we were talking. Some you might know very well. So as I say these words and put on my old lady glasses so that I can read my writing, because I write like a doctor, chicken scratch. Uh-huh. Um, throw back the first word that comes to mind. Oh, one, these are one word answers I have to give you? Oh, yes. Word association. That's how, oh, that, that's how we play the game. I thought I was going to be able to get into my whole, you know, crazy explanations oh, and just no. go on and on. We don't have All right. One time. word it is. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need a buzzer. All right. Here yeah. we go. Uh, victim. Oh, I just, yeah. Awful. Values. Crit- critic, all important, all important. Honesty. Um, a must. Courage. The beginning of it all. Man. Powerful. King. Sovereign. Hero. Oh, um, Im- impactful. Warrior. Bold. Integrity. Ah, critical. Lover. <laughs> Wait, lover or love? Lover. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Hello, inspi- lover. Inspiring. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I wanted to end on that because that was like one of those words that you've had difficulty with and you've come to create. This oh, emba- embrace. Yeah. Embrace. Absolutely yeah. Embraced. Those are some good words. These are words you use every day in every mm-hmm. one of your talks and every conversation you've had in every conversation we've had. So I was like, let me see how he associates with these words. Mm-hmm. And that was really actually quite interesting because I am used to the longer answer from you. Sure. How was yeah, that for you? It was it was interesting for me because there is that, um, you know, my lover side, the creative side of me likes to expound. I like abundance, right? So I want to get in there and really make it juicy and and you know expansive. But uh, I like that warrior side of uh uh-uh, uh, boom, just get at right. it. One word done. One word. Well, what's the word for abundance? Abundance. Abundance is abundance. <laughs> infinite. 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 Mm, I like that. Yeah. Infinite. All right. So before we go, I want to mm. ask you to share with holistically speaking listeners, mm. what would you like them to take away from what they've learned here and heard from Mr. Rogel? Yeah. You know, for me, I think the greatest thing to take away is that this is your story. The warrior, the lover, the king, queen, the hero, that is your journey and it is your story. And it speaks to you because you know this is who you are. So if you look at everything that happens in your life, the good, the bad, the challenges, the perceived failures, and I say perceived because I don't look at anything as a failure, because if you take the lessons from it, if you look at it and say, okay, what happened here? What did I get? How can I do better next time? The next time that challenge comes up, the stronger you're going to be. And look at all the challenges in your life and the things that you believe people, quote unquote, did to you. That's why that victim mentality is so limiting and stops us. 
when you step out of the victim and you take ownership and say, this is my story and I'm creating it as I go, what's the value in what just happened? And you can move forward towards your king, queen, towards your hero. Then I think nothing will ever stop you. You'll be victorious in everything that you do. And every challenge that you've come up against in your life, you will look back with look back on with reverence and honor and appreciation. And mm. it's a much, much more powerful way to live. Yeah. And I think we need to go through it. We need to go through the shit once in a while oh, to figure yeah. it out. And our mess is our message, right? Mm -hmm. Our traumas are triumphs. I say it all the time. And we don't realize it until we're on the other side. So just take a moment, take a breath. When you're going through something, realize there is a reason for it. Whatever's happened. What is it? It's Eckhart Tolle says, uh, and it's one of my favorite quotes, that life will give us whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of our consciousness. And how do you know it's the experience you should be having? Because you're having it. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and, I, and I firmly believe we create these things ourselves to push us mm. forward faster. Yeah, definitely. What yeah. a pleasure. It's so good to see you, even though nobody's going to see you. Well, you know, I do, I do this podcast and I make it more, uh, I want the active listeners, you know, and mm -hmm. I want people to just tune in. And I mean that on a number of levels, because what my guests share and you being one of them is really powerful tools to put in that mental health tool toolbox. Yeah. And uh, what you shared today are definitely a number of new tools that they can pick up at the holistic or holistic hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad you said that yeah. because, you know, it is, it is one of my intentions when I come yeah. on and do any shows like this, that people not only hear a story and are, and, you know, are entertained or engaged or go, Oh my God, that's me. Or I've been through that, but also have something that they can take away to you, a strategy that mm -hmm. they can use to move forward. So that was my intention today, Hillary. And I appreciate yeah. you giving me the opportunity to do that. Thank you for being here and being you. <laughs> my honor, my pleasure, my honor, really, truly. You can learn more about Eric and his podcast, Warriors, Lovers, Kings, and Heroes, by visiting his website. That link is on the podcast page. And if you have a great story to share on Holistically Speaking, or would like to learn more about how you can work with me on your own healing journey, connect with me on my website at HillaryRusso.com or on social media at Hillary Russo. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding. Thanks for listening. And until next time, be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh.